No, there is another fire truck coming by. Sorry, one second. I live on a super loud, busy corner in San Francisco. And my dog's going to start howling. Here we go. Uh, Hey, good job. Well done. You did great. everyone. I'm Dan Whitcomb, a senior product manager with the AutoCAD team, and you're listening to the AutoCAD podcast. In this series, we will give you an in-depth view into all things AutoCAD. So as a quick note, our podcast today may contain forward-looking statements about our products, business, and company information. Such information is merely our current plans, not promises or guarantees. Things may change quickly, and the development, release, and timing of any products or features remain at our sole discretion. Please don't rely on the information, especially for making any purchasing decisions. But with that, let's dive into today's episode. So today we'll be diving into AutoCAD 2024, and we'll be joined by our colleague, John Unbarlilar, to walk you through what's new. But before we get there, you may be wondering, what happened to Marcus? Well, After recording the last episode at AU this past September, he invited me and my teammate Prakriti Khanna to come on as co-hosts. You'll still hear from both Marcus and Danya El-Hassan in upcoming episodes of the AutoCAD podcast, so make sure you subscribe for updates. But with that, let me introduce you all to Prakriti. Having completed her education in civil engineering along with an MBA in operations in Mumbai, India, Prakriti started her career as a structural designer where she designed substructures for power transmission towers. After discovering her passion for building projects, Prakriti spent the next nine years helping shape the vision and defining product strategies for several startups across India and the United States, leading teams for a variety of projects in the construction technology domain before joining Autodesk. For the last year and a half, Prakriti has been leading the AutoCAD web and mobile product management team, which includes our most recent offering, AutoCAD Web. Welcome to the show, Prakriti. Thank you, Dan. And hello, everyone. I am excited to be on the show. Me too. I've been counting down the days to start recording these episodes with you. So with that, I have a few questions just about being a product manager on the web and mobile team, on the AutoCAD team in general, that I'd love to run by you to kind of get your thoughts and feels as a new host on the show. So with that, what do you feel like excites you about being an AutoCAD product manager? Big question, I know. But (laughs) how do you think the way we collaborate across AutoCAD drives that excitement as well? Yeah, that that is a big question. Honestly, it's very exciting for me personally, because AutoCAD was one of the first tools I learned at school and also the one I most frequently used as a structural designer. And this was years ago. And it's just so amazing to see how AutoCAD has transformed into a multi-platform product with desktop, web and mobile. I feel so happy to see that our customers can access a connected ecosystem from wherever they are working, be it in the office, on site or even from home. And I'm sure I would have loved all of this as a customer back then. And, you know, as the AutoCAD PM team, I just love that we can focus on prioritizing our customer problems and really building a solution, be it on desktop or web or mobile or even across these platforms, depending on what makes the most sense. Yeah, definitely. I think we can all relate to having an introduction to design technology via AutoCAD and all of us getting here because of that in some way or another. So you lead the AutoCAD web and mobile products after a short stint on the desktop team. So web and mobile are two products that really represent a huge shift in the way that we're able to get AutoCAD in the hands of our customers. Our customers are used to this annual release product that we definitely still release and rely on, but now web and mobile presents a snappier, zippier way to get features and ideas in front of our customers. So with that, as the product manager for web and mobile, what are the challenges, but also the opportunities you face when thinking about how to develop web-based products? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Honestly, I think it's a huge opportunity. I mean, the fact that we have a web and mobile platform, it, it really allows us to be more agile, have frequent releases. We are able to release every two weeks, and that really helps us to respond to our customers really quickly, 
iterate continuously and honestly that can be challenging at times but really in a good way because we constantly need to act fast prioritize switch gears every time an opportunity arises so i think it's really a huge opportunity i think i would also highlight that web is playing a huge role when it comes to driving cross platform development and this is something that we can all leverage upon we are able to build these web components and deploy it across autocad platforms especially desktop which allows us to keep pushing updates outside our current release cycles that's like bringing the goodness of web to our desktop products to give you an example on this last year we released the web sheet set manager which is the sheet set manager on the cloud uh, available on web and desktop and through the year we released multiple fun- functionalities and some very cool refinements like concurrent editing of dst files and we could do all of that behind the scenes so i think it's going to be great yeah being able to respond to those immediate customer needs and iterate like that is is definitely a an exciting opportunity that i'm certainly jealous of but looking forward to the future of how that continues to evolve so excellent so before we move on some fun stuff we always do some this or that questions both autocad related and not so i'm choosing these on the fly so uh you don't get to prepare your answer so let's see what you <laughs> okay. say okay go for it so are you a ribbon person or a command line person ah uh, i'm the old school command line great you'll appreciate this one vacation or staycation vacation hands down <laughs> light mode or dark mode dark mode always okay all right how about french fries or onion rings that's a tough one onion rings that's that's the mood oh really <laughs> i was thinking about that one before i i asked it and i think i would land on french fries but i didn't ask myself i don't mind sharing both yeah i share both <laughs> <laughs> awesome this is a this or this or that enter button space bar or right click enter oh my god i think i'll go with enter yeah me too <laughs> And then finally, scroll wheel or navigation commands. I think the scroll wheel for sure. Yeah, makes sense. Awesome. So I feel like we could go on forever, but it's time for us to get into today's episode. Sounds like a plan. Joining us now is John Anbarlilar. John went to the architectural school at Istanbul Technical University and completed his masters at University of Illinois in Chicago as an architect and lead consultant. John worked on a range of projects which included historic adaptive reuse, multifamily housing, education, transportation, and branded retail projects across the US and internationally. After completing his MBA at USC Marshall, John transitioned to the energy sector where he worked in California's zero net energy building market transformation. He was also a product manager for energy efficiency products and an R&D for renewables and distributed energy resource integration. And now he's closer to his roots again with AutoCAD. As a senior product manager for AutoCAD desktop products and celebrating his 1 year at Autodesk. Happy anniversary, John. Welcome to the show. Thank you for the introduction, Prakriti. Happy to be here. And congrats on your 1 year anniversary. It's been a real pleasure working with you over the past year. So, with that, Prakriti and I have some questions for you, not meant to grill you, but to get to know you a little bit better. So, Prakriti, you want to lead us off? Yeah, that was a long list of achievements, John. I can't help but notice, but you've had quite a varied career with significant experience in both architecture and then later in product management before now combining these experiences to be a PM at Autodesk. What do you find most fulfilling about being a product manager for AutoCAD? Is there anything that you didn't expect? In architecture and design, there are very specific use cases for your client, and so it's very focused. In energy world, it's very broad. Everyone is your client. Everyone has has access to grid. So I see AutoCAD somewhere in between. Our user base is vast in population of it's like a vast population of design professionals. They're building the world in small and big ways. So I find that fulfilling to make their lives easier so that they can excel at their work more efficiently and proficiently. What I didn't expect was that there are true AutoCAD veterans in the team. 
they were here when I was learning AutoCAD like 20 plus years ago. And it's an amazing institution knowledge and a treasure to be with them. Definitely. That is so true. <laughs> I think we all learn that when we start on the team. We're like, wow, I, I don't know what the average age is of people here or average tenure, but like 15 years at least. I work with somebody who started in 86, which is wild. So what are some highlights about the way that our team operates and collaborates that you feel helps drive the value for our customers? I mean, the three of us see each other every day and are constantly working together. So what do you think? I definitely enjoy our debates. Like we have very different perspectives. We are also a very quite passionate bunch. We look at a lot of data, but we connect that data with our users and understand what the data is saying and what they're saying to make their life easier. We also keep evaluating core functionality along with like super new cool features. So this is value for our existing customers and folks who are just joining the workforce. Definitely. And I think we all relate. I think all of us on the PM team mostly now have some kind of industry background, at least the the three of us do, all of us on the desktop team. But I think that diversity definitely helps bring these different perspectives. I don't know what you think, Prakriti. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's it's different across. I have some construction knowledge, there is architecture knowledge, there's design knowledge. It's It's amazing how we all are able to bring something relevant and different to the table. Definitely, definitely. All right. So with that, we can move on to the core topic of today's podcast, which is really focusing on AutoCAD 2024, which released just a few weeks ago at the end of March. So we wanted to dive into a a discussion about what most excites us, some of the features, what we've been aiming for. So I'll just jump right into the conversation with the topic of the idea of accelerated creativity. Before we talk about the individual features, John Prakriti, do you have ideas about what accelerated creativity means to you, either as a product manager or otherwise? It's about being faster, more efficient, just smarter in in, in the way you work. Definitely. And also that creativity part is really, you know, it's just not about using AutoCAD faster, but it's really about what the customer can do with a faster AutoCAD, which is unlock that creative potential, which I think we're always thinking about. So were there any features that you want to particularly highlight within that category that you think really hits this idea of accelerated creativity? I think smart blocks is super cool for repetitive tasks. This is what robots and machines are for and software is for, and we are getting there. Yeah, I I definitely agree about smart blocks. And I think with relation to machine learning and AI, we've wanted to be really careful about how we implement machine learning in AutoCAD and making sure that we're very tactical and pointed about it and not trying to do the job of the user, but allowing machine learning to be an assistant to augment the ability for the user to, again, be a creative individual. And so with smart blocks, both the placement side, which is a feature that looks at the existing placement of a block in a DWG and then makes assumptions about how else you'd want to place that block and essentially snaps it into position. So with smart blocks replacement, this is where we've been very tactical with figuring out a core customer need related to blocks, which is the ability to replace single instances of a block with another block, but then putting ML in there so that they have the option to use these ML suggestions from their block library of other blocks they might want to use. And so far, we're getting very, very exciting feedback from customers about the value of this. We also have the M-chip support with the AutoCAD for Mac. It is twice as fast now. Definitely. And I think that's been really exciting. It was exciting to see on the the subreddit for Mac that AutoCAD was actually trending because of this M-chip support and this this speed. And anybody that's used it is like, wow, this is some real advancements for AutoCAD. So that's really exciting. And of course, there's other performance enhancements that you know tie along to this idea of accelerated creativity. But Enough about that. So there's some other areas that we definitely invested in, uh, in particular uh, on the the website related to an idea of a connected uh, design experience. You want to talk about that a little bit, Prakriti? Yeah, no, that's that's a great point. You know, we introduced uh, Lisp on web last year, and that's really to enable our customers on web to 
bring all the list proteins that they have been using on their desktop application to the web application and essentially get the goodness of all these automation routines that they have set up on the web app as well and it just doesn't end at that we have also started investing into cloud automations i mean again as as i was saying the key benefit of the web application is that we have the power of cloud that we can bring to all our autocad customers and yeah very recently we released this feature called batch plot to pdf which is one of the first cloud automations that we are releasing which is going to allow our users to come to the web application use a file manager and just publish a bunch of dwg files from the file manager without even opening a drawing file and that's super exciting and and the best part is that our users can also save it as a template so if for these files or for the project there are any changes they can just come back in and publish that template so i think that just speaks to one of the other amazing superpowers of the web product you know being able to batch plot directly from the file manager in web and i'm sure there'll be other exciting opportunities coming along but speaking of exciting opportunities Prakriti, do you have a, a a new subscription type that you want to tell the listeners about? Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you mentioned this dance. So, we released the AutoCAD web offering in August 2022. This is the first of its kind offering which is going to allow our customers to subscribe to just the web and mobile products alone at a cost as low as $10 a month. So, I think this is going to be huge. for our customers and this is the latest offering that we have added to our different subscription types that we have along with AutoCAD and LT. Yeah, and I think I'm already one of the biggest cheerleaders for AutoCAD web offering. I every time somebody's like, "Uh, I want AutoCAD, but it's a little pricey." I'm like, "Have you heard of AutoCAD web?" Absolutely. Because there's your solution right there. So, if you get some new customers, uh, let me know. How about, you know, this idea inherent to the connected design experience? John is a is a world that's you're deeply embedded in with what we call markup import and and markup assist which also touches ml but curious how for you that relates to a connected design experience and even to web yeah markup import and assist are super cool features where we are looking from a drafter's point of view often people look into markup experiences from generating Okay and after they're generated what do you do with them you have to actually go into your drafting and clean up your drawing I wish we had this feature when I was like a young architect ling I guess because it makes things picking up red line feedback from your clients or from other engineers like super easy and it's all connected through the markup import and assist which is lives in a safe space called trace. Yeah, and I think this functionality is super cool from the point of view of how different users on the field could leverage their mobile application, you know, pick up the phone, take a picture of the PDF drawing, bring that markup back into the AutoCAD ecosystem. So, seeing that entire workflow is is awesome. Definitely, and I think we've all we all can relate to sitting there getting red lines going page by page and with the highlighter crossing off those red lines and to have AutoCAD be able to be on this journey of automating those red lines for you you've saved individuals tons of time you've saved firms tons of money and again you've unlocked potential for our users right they now have more time to do the things that matter to them so excited to see how this evolves how it evolved from the start when we first released trace and how we built upon that to release a uh, markup import and assist and all its improvements. Yeah, and I'm also very excited about all the features that we are building that's really driving our customers towards better outcomes. And one such feature that really excites me is activity insights. I'm just curious to hear thoughts from both of you on how you'll feel about it. Yeah, well, as you know, I've worked a lot on this feature and it's one that's near and dear to my heart. Activity insights is really the first step to driving better and more efficient cross user collaboration especially for users at, on large teams potentially working on large projects but really those users for whom many different individuals touch a single dwg whether that means they own part of the dwg one person is annotating one person is drafting or otherwise We're starting to provide a log of all the different actions that occurred to that DWG in a way that's AutoCAD specific. It's not just about the file was renamed, of course we track that, but it's about this file was e-transmitted or this file was plotted with this plot style or it was purged and this many items were purged or audited or 
all sorts of different things. We also connect it to our other features. So if a new trace was created, well, we log that as well. And we're looking for very exciting opportunities to continue to evolve this, to make it more intelligent, to really, again, accelerate that creativity and, and help continue to foster collaboration for our users. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And I'm sure this is going to address a number of pain points that we've heard from our customers and really going to help them with better collaboration and transparency with their teams. So awesome. Sounds great. And John, you have worked so much on, you know, you are really responsible for bringing Autolisp to LT, I would say. So tell us more about that. Yeah, actually, in half of my career, I've worked with AutoCAD LT, so it's dear to my heart. We looked into our usage in our AutoCAD customers, almost like one third of them use Lisp uh, relatively routinely. And we are very proud to bring that capability to the AutoCAD LT, which will add more value to our LT customers. So folks who are not familiar with AutoLisp, it is a powerful productivity tool that enables you to automate workflows and extend the functionality of AutoCAD LT. You don't have to be an expert in Autolisp to take advantage of many automation opportunities. You don't have to write your own program. There are a bunch of programs existing out there in the world. You can download them and test them, ask from your friends what they're using, and then try if they also work for your workflows. Uh, while not all of the functions are supported, we believe like majority of our customers will be very happy with what we offer them. Awesome. Very excited to see how our LT customers benefit from this added functionality. Definitely. We'll see what the future of LT is. I think we all have some very exciting ideas about what it could be and, and the role it could serve. And I know it's something that a lot of our users rely on. So we thank you and the team for bringing that to uh, to life because I know it wasn't a walk in the park. So exciting the to see it released. Amazing. Yeah, to totally. Say, our team is amazing. I'm this new guy who's been with the company for one year, doesn't know anything. And the team was super amazing with each micro wrench we throw at their way. They did achieve the goals. It was amazing. And I think that goes for all the teams that we work with, you know, for, so shout out to every single team that we work with. And for our listeners, you know, these are people who are in the trenches and have been for decades and know the ins and outs of this product in such incredible and deep ways that it's really, you know, every day you're in awe of these people. So thanks for all the support there, for sure. So one thing I do want to touch on is when we talk about Lisp, we're talking about automation in AutoCAD, right? And AutoCAD has been automating forever. We automated the process of taking drafting by hand and moved that to the computer back in the 80s. And now we're reconsidering what automation means. And overall, I do want to make sure to, to highlight the, the My Insights effort overall. So My Insights is a, a program that was released first back with AutoCAD 2022.1, summer 2021. And it's evolved significantly from there. And what this is, is being able to really help our users be the best AutoCAD users they could be. Well, how are we doing that? Well, we're doing that by understanding your unique workflows. Not everybody uses AutoCAD the same way. I'm sure the three of us all, if we were to go draft a floor plan, we would be shocked and simultaneously horrified and amazed by the different ways that we do things. But for a lot of different users, there's, there's best practices. And we want to move away from a world where you're nudging your coworker next to you asking, what's the fastest way to do this? Or what's the best way to do this? And really be proactive in that process and understand how you use AutoCAD and provide insights, suggestions for you do this. Maybe you want to do this. Maybe you want to upgrade to the more recent version. Maybe you want to use this feature. One of the ways that we're doing that is you know, with last year, we released the macro advisor, which makes automation easier for you by understanding how you use AutoCAD uniquely and provides recommendations for macros to help automate some of these workflows. I know that Lisp and, and macros can be daunting for some people. So that's one of the ways that we're trying to bring automation closer to the users, first by making it more available in more products like LT, but also to help you tailor what automations you're using. But it's been a really exciting time to work with the Insights program and see how this could all evolve. 
Yeah, I can't agree more with you Dan, especially on the insights work. You know, personally for me it has been so useful to use that feature, especially as I came back to AutoCAD and started using it really deeply after a long pause. And it I, and I feel it really met me where I was in my journey of learning AutoCAD and really helped me get more efficient in my overall usage. So, I think it's a personalized experience and I'm really hopeful that this benefits our customers and continues to do so. Yeah, definitely. That's super exciting to hear about as well. I think that really sums up a lot of the exciting uh, advancements that we've had in AutoCAD, both the 2024, but also in previous years. So with that, we can close out this session with some fun questions from Prakriti this time. Yeah. John, can't wait to ask you these questions. Are you ready for it? Yes. Excited. <laughs> okay. So AutoCAD on web or mobile? Mobile, because it's in your pocket. Awesome. Let's see, AutoCAD on Windows or Mac? I'm a Windows person when it comes to AutoCAD. But have you heard how fast Mac is these days? <laughs> Ooh, I need to get a new laptop. <laughs> how about groups or blocks? Blocks. Yeah, now with smart blocks, even more, I think. Yeah. Yeah. This one may really be for you. City or country? Uh, city weekdays, country on the weekends. <laughs> okay, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Not that I have a second home or something. <laughs> yeah, we are coming coming to stay along. <laughs> Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Soup or salad? Uh, soup. Uh, I live in a cold place. I need my soup. Okay, uh, that was fun. <laughs> hey, so I know Marcus started this segment of the podcast with this or that, but has anyone asked him? That is a very good point, John. And I think Prakriti and I will have to sneak that in on a future episode. Absolutely. And I, I can't wait to ask him these questions. John, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast today. It was great to have you. See you on our next meeting, which is in an hour, I think. <laughs> thank you, Prakriti. Love to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.